at the end of the day, any show, whether it's somebody else's show or this show, it ain't about us. It's about you. What am I talking about? You're about to find out right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you at the very least every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday over the digital airwaves of YouTube. As usual, I want to take a moment to thank my subscribers out there. It's now exceeded over 590,000. Can't thank y'all enough for the love and support you've given me. Keep giving it to me, and I'm going to keep on giving it right back. Make sure if you want to continue to like and follow the Stephen A. Smith Show right here on YouTube, just click the bell to get notified for all of our new content, and boom, you too will be the latest member of the Stephen A. Smith family. By the way, while you're doing that, make sure to pick up a copy of my new book, Straight Shooter, a memoir of second chances and first takes. Now, in paperback, just go to straightshooterbook.com to get the book that's straightshooterbook.com. Listen, in this studio today, normally I'm giving an opening monologue and I'm interviewing somebody, I'm touching on hot topics and stuff like that. But on a day like today, you know what? I was just in the mood not to do any of that. All I wanted to do was talk to y'all. All I wanted to do was hear from y'all and respond to comments that you might give me. In some cases, near the end of the show, it's going to be videos. In other cases, it's simply going to be calls. But we're going to start off the show today with tweets. Every single segment of this show is me talking to you, the people. Let me hear where y'all coming from, what's on your mind, and what's the kind of things you want to ask me about. So let's start off the show the right way. At Gavin Wanders C tweets to me, Stephen A, who's winning this fight? James Bond or John Wick? In a fight, I believe... It would be Bond, James Bond, because he's no joke. I know we've seen some of the martial artistry that John Wick has put forth, but I never bought into all of that because it was too much, too excessive, and it was too unrealistic, too many scenes. I wasn't feeling that, even though I'm a fan of Keanu Reeves. But I know you can't beat a bullet. So obviously you'd pick John Wick since he's the one pointing the gun and he's just flicking his watch. But for all we know, James Bond got, probably got a gun in that watch, probably got a bullet. He can sit up there, pow! Do something like that. So I can't rule out James Bond, but he's just too smooth. He's too gifted. He's too skilled. Okay? Too slick for me to get bet against Bond. I just can't find myself doing it. I'm going with Bond. James Bond. Let's go to the next tweet, please. Prize picks at prize picks. See, even there, you got to pick one celebrity to coach your team in the NCAA tournament. Who you got? Are you ready for this? Jay-Z, Jay-Z, Hove, H to the Izzo, that dude. Because I have to confess, the brother knows his basketball. I've lost about six bets to him. I ain't going to lie to you. I mean, I think I might have beat him once. He might have beat me six times. He jokes with me, man. You ain't, I'm your damn expert. What the hell? Just come to me. Because he does know his sports. And if I look at him... Clearly, he's inspirational. Clearly, he vibes with the younger generation. He can max, he could get max effort from them in the whole bit. And you talk about the NCAA tournament and him knowing some ball. Yes, basketball is a sport that he knows. I would go with Jay-Z as my celebrity to coach my team in the NCAA tournament. Next up, please give it to me. At Blazing one in invasion, well, Blazing invasion, the number one instead of I, by the way. Stephen A., who you got winning in the street fight? Dudes from King of the Hill or dudes from Family Guy? None of these dudes look like they can fight. Even though the Family Guys look a little bit different, one's in a wheelchair, I get that. The other's a bit excessive with the blubber. All right, this dude... He's got a rotund midsection. This dude uh, looked a little bit anorexic. It's interesting what way you can go in, but I got to tell you, I'm going to go with the king of the hill. Initially, I was thinking about this because of their weight, 
But I start looking at this from right here, and all of these guys look like they form a military or something. There's something about them just standing around like that. Look like dudes that hurt you, that, that, that are accustomed to hurting people, and they've just aged now. I'm going to go with King of the Hill. That's what I'm going to do. Next up, let's go to this. Stephen A., at Lakers lead, right? Stephen A., would you rather eat this or witness the Cowboys win a Super Bowl? Clam chowder? Chunky clam chowder? I got to admit to you, I would rather watch the Cowboys win a Super Bowl. That just looked nasty. I'm sorry. That looks like, that, I'm just sorry. That look, I'm, not, I'm not knocking Chunky because I like Chunky soup, you know, all the other, other, you know, like chicken noodle soup, other stuff. But this right here looked like somebody vomited and just froze the damn thing and turned it into something that looks like clam chowder on a stick or something. I'm not feeling that at all. I would rather use the Cowboys to win a Super Bowl. It would annoy me to no end, but I've gotten to the point where, damn, it's 29 straight years. It's become so bad for the Cowboys, I'm starting to feel sorry for them. So that's just me. Let's go to the next one right here, please. At Blaine Henry TFL writes, who wins in a race, Stephen A., Lightning McQueen or Speed Racer? I'm going to go with Speed Racer. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with Speed Racer. First of all, I love your name. I know Lightning McQueen and all this. I get all that, but I'm a roll with Speed Racer. That's just how I feel about it. I don't know. I'm guessing, but I'm a roll with that. Let me go to the last one right here, please. Okay. Look at this right here. Now, before I get into this right here, please understand this before I get to your calls. This wasn't directed at me. But I came across one last post on X from the other day with Lamar Jackson, Baltimore Ravens star quarterback Lamar Jackson, that I had to respond to. At Julie T. Hart, H-A-R-D-T, on X, posted, you ain't black if you never ate this. That's what she wrote. Lamar replied, whole time I've been right. Lamar Jackson, from a distance, rave it up. Figurative high five, baby. I must have been white the whole time, too. I'd be damned if I was going to eat that. The hell is that? I don't know what it is, alligator something? I don't know what it is. But there's no way in hell with, the, with that skin and these hands, like these paws. Right? Oh, hell no. Claws. Now, I'm not eating that. I'm not eating that. I must have been white the whole time. Because if you're telling me you ain't black if you ate this, that's damn near as bad as Biden once saying, if you vote for Trump instead of him, you ain't black. I mean, you got to be kidding me. I don't know anybody black that ate that before. What the hell they been talking about? I must have been white the whole time too, Lamar. Word up. Word. Up next, your calls in a minute, plus some videos. It's me vibing with the fans. It's Stephen A. Smith right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show over the digital airways of YouTube. Holla at your board before the weekend starts. Okay, everybody, you know what time it is. It's time for Stephen A's Weekly Sports Picks. You know that the Major League Baseball season is just around the corner, right? So I've teamed up with Prize Picks to bring you my favorite baseball picks for every big-time player and game. Prize Picks is a skill-based, real-money, daily fantasy sports game where you select two or more players and predict if they'll have more or less than their game stat projections. It's not only incredibly exciting, but super easy to play. It takes only 60 seconds to make your picks. Just pick the stats for Aaron Judge and Blake Snell or Juan Soto and Zach Wheeler. Or better yet, choose all four. Then sit back and watch. And if you go to prospects.com right now and use promo code SAS, you will receive a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. You heard me. Go to prospects.com. Type in my initials SAS for the first time deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy, y'all. Now, let's look at my winning picks. Today, I'm picking all of the game's biggest sluggers and their home run totals. Let's start off with the one and only Juan Soto. Now, of the New York Yankees, he ain't no longer on the, Los, on the San Diego Chargers, or the Padres. That ain't happening no more, okay? More or less, 35 and a half home runs for this season. New York Yankees, you see it. Their new left fielder, I like this. Guess what I'm going with? More! Because he's Juan Soto, that's why. 
I'm going with more on that one. Let's go to Aaron Judge. More or less than 41 and a half home runs in a season. Please, really? That's what we're doing? That's what we're doing. We forgot that he's Aaron Judge. We forgot that he's the judge. He ain't Judge Judy, but he's still a judge. Okay, this baseball season, baby. We going with more. This man ain't hitting less than 41 and a half home runs unless he's injured. As long as he's healthy enough, he's smacking 50. That's a big brother, by the way. I was with him. Remember that day when I threw out that great first pitch? I mean that awful first pitch? I mean that first pitch that made me ashamed of myself for about two hours? That pitch? That dude right there? I was standing in front of him. That's a massive, massive man. He's going to smack more than 41 and a half home runs. You can book that, all right? Ronald Acuna Jr., more or less than 37 and a half home runs. The brother is not just a player, he's an athlete. He don't need home runs to make his presence. So he'll hit his share now, don't get me wrong, but it don't have to be 37 or more, okay? I'm gonna go with less on this one. Don't mean he won't smack in 100 RBIs. Don't mean he won't have about 30 stolen bases, but 37 home runs might be a little bit too much. I'm going to go with less on this one. And last but not least, Jordan Alvarez. More or less than 37 and a half home runs. Remember this brother. Remember him. He can ball. I like him a lot. I also like Houston, okay? You are a DH for Dusty Baker. There's a reason. Because you can smack home runs. That's what he does. I'm going with more on this one. More home runs than 37 and a half for Alvarez, okay? By the way, Dusty Baker retired. Don't think I forgot that. I didn't forget that. I just like bringing up his name because he was a black man as a manager in Major League Baseball. That's an aberration. We don't see that every day. So I got to go with that. You see more on Alvarez, more on Soto, more on Judge, less on Acuna Jr., that's it. I gave it to you, more and less, depending on how you like it. Either way, it works. It's Stephen A. Prize Picks, baby. Don't get no better. Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here over the digital airwaves of YouTube. I did my tweets earlier. Now I'm going to do the calls. Later on, I'll get to your videos. I'll explain that a little bit later. But let's get to the calls right now. I kind of like in this episode right now. Communicate with the calls. I'm a man of the people. I'm a man of the people. It's about talking to the people because I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Let's go to it. Zephyr in Tucson, Arizona. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, man? Hi. First of all, love the podcast, Stephen. Um, my you. question for you. Of course. If there were an, an expansion in the NBA, what two cities would you want to get teams and what would you name them? Get creative. I love that. Well, I didn't hear the last part. What was the last qu- part of your question? Uh, just what two cities uh, would you want for the right. NBA expansion the and cities. what would you name them? And get creative. I, I, I don't know what I would name them. All right. But let me say this to you. I would definitely want an NBA team in Las Vegas. That's a given. I would definitely want a team in Las Vegas. And you know the other city that I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sort of got trepidation. I'm going back and forth, back and forth with it. (sighs) Either Seattle, because I think that's a great basketball town and they should have never lost their team, even though they're happy in Oklahoma City, or Nashville, Tennessee. I think Nashville, Tennessee is an undercover big-time city. It really is. And I think that they would embrace the NBA product more so than people realize. I would like to see Nashville get one, but I do like to see Seattle as well. And if I had to do that, you know, I I don't know. I don't I I, I don't know. Nashville. I don't know what to say, what what name to give you. I got to think about that a little bit more. I can't let you put me on the spot. Just throw out some names off the cuff. But Nashville, Vegas. I would say Seattle and Vegas, but Nashville, if you had to pick one closer to the East Coast and stuff like that, that would be definitely Vegas. And then the toss-up between Nashville and Seattle, Washington. Appreciate the call, Zephyr. Thank you so much. Tucker in South Dakota. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Tucker? How we doing, Stephen A.? I'm doing all right. Thank you for calling. What's up? All right. So I've been seeing a lot of this bull drive all over, mainly X. I don't know what's wrong with that app sometimes, but all over the Internet about Kirk Cousins and just a major bull jab about him. I want to get your thoughts on it. So I, 
I've been around Minnesota pretty much my whole life. I saw you were in uh, Minnesota for the Bucks game. I saw you up on that Jumbotron. Nice for you to make an appearance to Midwest. Bye. Thank you, young man. So I've been watching Kirk Cousins my whole life, uh, and that pretty much makes me an expert on him. I've watched him uh, develop pocket presence. And he's got a way better understanding of dynamics with receivers. Uh, so what are you trying to do? I don't, I don't need a dissertation. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold, 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 hold it. Of- hold it. I don't need a dissertation. Are you saying you love Kirk Cousins, or you don't like the fact that uh, you don't like the fact that he's being criticized, or that people are, are, are right to criticize him because he ain't that great? Which position is it? You know what? You can criticize him all you want. You can say all you want about his game. All I'm saying is without a shadow of a doubt, without any moment's hesitation, Tucker. there is no way that Kirk Cousins would be cheating on his wife. There's just no way. Cheating on his wife? What the hell are you talking about? Goodbye, man. I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. I'm not going to even address that. It's none of my business what his family life is like. All I know is Kirk Cousins, the football player. He's a hell of a player, but he's only got one playoff victory on his resume. That's less than Dak Prescott, who's 2-5 and five in postseasons, and that's the way I look at it. I ain't getting into anybody's personal business. Grow the hell up, man. Get a life. Let's go to Al or AJ, I'm sorry, in Chicago. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, AJ? How are you? Doing good, man. I just got a quick question. So, bro, are you into them snow buddies? Are you like them spicy Latinas? I need to know. Spicy Latinas never bothered me. That's the best way I can answer that question. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm partial to my sisters, and there's nothing I love more than a black woman. But Latinas are something special. I, I just can't deny it. I can't deny it. Next question. Let's go to Julie in Texas. You're live with Stephen A. Hey, Julie, how are you? Hey, how are you, Stephen A? Hey, I, I, I'm going to hopefully have a little bit more interesting things to talk about than these last two calls. Tell me so. about it. Thank you so much. All Thank right. you. All right. Well, first of all, I, I live in Texas, but I want you to know I'm not a Cowboys fan. Thank God. So go I just want to make sure we get that, get that straight. Okay. So um, I'm assuming you've seen some Duck highlights, some Oregon Duck basketball highlights from yesterday's game. I have not, and, uh, actually. I'm sorry. I have not. I've, right, been, well, I've had a very busy day, but go ahead. All right. Well, I want to talk about Dana Altman. I, do you think he's the most underrated coach in all of college basketball? I can't. I can't. Um, I wouldn't say underrated. I think he's widely respected. I think everybody knows what he brings to the table. Um, so I wouldn't say he's underrated. But I will tell you, whether it comes to basketball or the football program, you're always hearing great things about Oregon's program. You know they've got money with the back of the Phil Knight and Nike and all of that other stuff. We've known that for years. When are you going to get it to a Final Four? When are you going to win a national championship? Those are the kind of things that we want to look at. Um, you know, obviously in, in football, they've made noise for years, but you're still waiting for them to kick down the door in certain respects. And I think that that's the issue with the Oregon program. You're out near the, near the Pacific Northwest, or in the Pacific Northwest, and people are looking at you and they don't get to see you as often as they would like. And when they do see you because they've heard so much about you, they're waiting for you to close the deal. And you've got enough backing, but somehow, some way, you don't. Don't do it. So we look at the coaches and we respect them, but we still want to see them close the deal. That's what it comes down to. I think this is the year. I hope you're right. This is the year. The basketball team's looking spicy. It wouldn't wouldn't bother me one bit. I want great basketball. And I got to be honest with you, Julie, I think women's college basketball is far more entertaining than the men's at this particular moment in time. I think that when you look at Caitlin Clark, she's the story of college basketball. And I think when you look at a matchup, LSU going up against South Carolina in women's ball, I think that's the biggest matchup people would love to see. Of course, you appreciate the athleticism and the prowess of men and what they bring to the table. But in terms of overall competition and collegiate basketball right now, as this in NCAA tournament is unfolding, you do find yourself looking at the women's game just as much as you're looking at the men game and salivating for certain matchups with women. I want to see Caitlin Clark go up against LSU again. I want to see LSU against South Carolina again. That to me is more compelling than anything the men have offered me as a headline coming into this NCAA tournament. All in, in, the, in the late 80s at Bucknell University? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we didn't have big crowds, but it's just it's just awesome to see where it's gone. And yeah. um, I can't Absolutely. wait to watch. Take it easy, Julie. Thank you for calling. Feel free to Thank call back anytime. Today. No problem. Bye. Trey in Amarillo, Texas. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Trey? How are you? Stephen A. Talk to me. What's up? 
So I have an interview tomorrow for a, a sports radio where I live. Um, what's your advice for me? What's your advice? What advice do you need? What you trying to do? Um, you know, my, we'll be where you're at, like, be, like, successful like you Well, are. first order, first, first order of business, you got to be a bit more decisive. When I ask you a question, you got to have an answer. You want to do what I do for a living? Be strong in your convictions. Try to know what you're talking about. I'm not complying that you don't, but I'm saying have an opinion, research facts, have an opinion, be strong in your beliefs, okay? Don't be hesitant. Don't call up sounding shy, a bit timid and unsure and indecisive with yourself. You got to make sure that when you speak, you project. Whether you're on camera or you're in front of a microphone without a camera, you have to project. You're trying to grab people and lure them in to want to listen to you and what you have to say and where your opinions and thoughts and perspectives are coming from. You can't dance around it. You got to bring it. All uh, right. Yes, sir. Take right, it thank easy. You. No problem. Take care of yourself, Trey, and good luck. Good luck. No doubt. Up next, I got to get to the videos because you know what? We don't just get your tweets. We don't just get your calls. We also accept some of your videos. You got to act nice, though. Can't be raunchy and all that other stuff. Can't be out of pocket too much, okay? Not too much. Not on this show. Can't do that. I ain't going to let you do that. But it doesn't mean I don't want to hear what you have to say, and I don't want to see you while you're saying it, because I like both. That's up next. Your videos with your boy, Stephen A., on this beautiful, beautiful Friday. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Back with those in a minute. Let me take a second to remind everybody out there that right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, I demand excellence, and I will never, ever settle for anything less. And that is why I've teamed up with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, which will help turn all of your sports knowledge into some big time money where the money reside. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app where you simply choose two or more of your favorite players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and then submit your entry in less time than it'll take for Caitlin Clark to pull up and hit a long range game winning three, y'all. Prize Picks allows you to play on every basket, rebound, and assist, or better yet, a combination of all three. So download the Prize Pick app today and join a community of more than 3 million members. And if you do, Prize Picks will match your first time deposit of up to $100. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. So go to prizepicks.com right now and use code SAS. That's my initials, y'all. My initials, in case you didn't figure that out. Just use promo code SAS on Prize Picks to receive a first deposit match of up to $100 and then let the games begin. Prize Picks! Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here over the digital airwaves of YouTube. I felt like relaxing, taking video calls this time around. Ready to tweet, ready to calls. But you know what? Sometimes it's fun to see who's actually sending in these questions, who's actually calling in. When you put your face to a name, you know, I, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. So let me listen to what the folks have to say, because after all, again, as I said, I am a man of the people. What's up? What's up? Stephen A. Smith. What's going on? It's your boy, the coach, Sean Bell. And I have one question that I need to ask you. I've been on your show a few times asking you some Q&As. You picked it. But here's a question that I really need to know. You get a chance to play for Bill Belichick or Nick Saban at their prime, most prestigious coaching level. Who is the coach you want to play for? And which one of them would you consider more of a GOAT? I have to tell you, it would be Nick Saban. I think Nick Saban is one of the greatest coaches we've ever seen in our lifetimes. His, his attention to detail is big time, but he has shown an ability over the years to adjust. Nick Saban has had to coach different kids over his years at Alabama. Bill Belichick, had Tom Brady for 19 years. Yes, you went to nine Super Bowls. Yes, you won six Super Bowl titles. All of that is true. And over the course of that period of time, you were able to accomplish it with different players, but the same quarterback, all right? Obviously a dogged system that you enforced, a culture that you enforced, that you never had to alter in any way because those dudes were coming into the NFL and they wanted to be there and they wanted to win and they wanted to get paid too. 
Not that they got paid that much from New England compared to other places. But the biggest thing about it for me is that you had Tom Brady. Nick Saban had a multitude of players at the quarterback position and beyond, obviously, because you're talking about college. So he was called upon to make adjustments as things occurred, and he did it. And he did it at a very elite, high level. Nick Saban is my choice on that particular question. Let's go to the next one. Hey, Stephen A., big fan of the show. My question for you is, what is the number one rivalry in all of sports? Is it Yankees-Red Sox? Is it Celtics-Lakers? Is it North Carolina-Duke? What is that premier rivalry, the number one across all sports? Can't bring up rivalries, my man, without mentioning Michigan versus Ohio State in football. But I would tell you, my favorite, being a basketball guy, is North Carolina Duke. And here's why. They're eight miles apart. See, everybody keeps looking. And you know what they're looking at? They're looking at these two programs, these two storied story, story programs going up against one another. Let me get the personal into the mix for a second. When you eight miles apart, you're both in Durham, North Carolina, even though Chapel Hill is Chapel Hill is basically its own city, its own town. You go into the same restaurants. You go into the same parties. You messing around with the same honeys. Let's just call it what it is. There's a lot that goes into that rivalry. See, when you and I am in Ann Arbor, Michigan, or Columbus, Ohio, that's hours apart. North Carolina and Duke is minutes. And those ain't football schools, it's basketball schools. I say you take all of that into consideration. You cannot underestimate the power of that rivalry. North Carolina and Duke, that's what it is for me. Last one, what's up? Stephen A, what's up? This is your boy, Chuck Bass. This is Groot, and we both want to know if you and Pitbull walk into a room, who are the ladies coming to see? <sighs> it's Pitbull, man. I'd love to say it's me, especially since I have more hair than him. But the fact is, is that he's a musician. He's an artist. Now, I'm an artist in a variety of different ways, no doubt, but not to the level he is. He's a musician, an artist, and obviously he's made a lot more money and he's filled arenas and all of this other stuff. And you know what they say. Musicians have it good. Even comedians will tell you, as important as it is to make a lady laugh, when you can sing to them, remember Luther? When you could do that, you have a special gift. It really, really, really does matter. I have to concede. As confident as I am in myself, I'd have to play second fiddle to Pitbull. That depresses me. <laughs> but it's true. And by the way, I think he can speak Spanish too. And he lives down in Miami. Damn, he got the life. I wish I was Pitbull. <laughs> Goodbye, y'all. Goodbye.